Suppose we have a population with a numerical variable. As an example, suppose our, our population is all the bass fish in Florida. And the variable that we're looking at in the milligrams of mercury per kilogram in each of the fish. Then we could easily take a sample of size n, say, and we could calculate the average mercury content in that sample. That would be a, a point estimate for the parameter that we're looking for. So we have this variable x. In our case, we're talking about milligrams of mercury per kilogram in fish. We could look at the probability distribution for that variable. This distribution may or may not be a normal distribution, but it will have a mean and a standard deviation. If we're trying to understand what that mean of the population is, we could start by taking a sample of size n and calculating the sample mean. We usually denote the sample mean as x bar. We would also be able to calculate the standard deviation of the sample that would be S. Both of those are point estimates for the uh, population mean and population standard deviation. Now, if we considered every possible sample of size n and calculated the x bar, the sample mean, for each one of those samples, we would have a distribution of sample means. That distribution will have a mean, we'll call it mu x bar. It will also have a standard deviation. We'll call it sigma sub x bar. The wonderful thing is that the central limit theorem tells us that the mean of all of these sample means will be that parameter that we were looking for, the mean of the original population. It's also important to note that the standard deviation of these x bars will be related to the standard deviation of the original population it will be that standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n, the size of the sample. We will seldom know what this standard deviation is, so we'll almost always have to approximate this value by taking the sample standard deviation and divide that by n. Now, if certain assumptions are met, we can almost be guaranteed that this distribution of sample statistics of those uh, sample means is going to be normally distributed. That is, if n is sufficiently large, say uh, bigger than 30, or if this original population was normally distributed. If either of those conditions are satisfied, then we're almost guaranteed that this is going to be normally distributed. So I put three marks on this number line to indicate where the mean is, where the mean plus a standard deviation and the mean minus a standard deviation. Then we can pretty accurately draw something that looks like a normal distribution. Because within one standard deviation, a normal distribution is concave down, looking like that through that part. And outside of that, it's concave up. So Now, our point estimate for the mean, our x bar, will end up somewhere on this number line. For our example, let's say that it ends up right here. There's our, the x bar that we got from our sample. William Gossett tells us that in this case, instead of using a z distribution down here, that we can get better results by using a t-distribution. A t-distribution is much like a z-distribution. It has a mean of zero and a standard deviation that is something bigger than zero. The reason for that is that we're trying to adjust for the fact that, we're, that we must use this approximation. We can make a pretty reasonable sketch of a t-distribution because we know that the standard deviation is a little bit bigger than then one, so it'll be concave down through this piece, then it will be concave up outside of there. Any value in this distribution of sample statistics can be converted to a t value by taking that value, say we want <clears throat> to convert this x bar to a t value, 
We take that x bar minus mu. That will tell it how far, how far x bar is away from the, the mean of this distribution, and then divide by the standard deviation of uh, of this distribution. We agreed that we would always call this standard deviation, the distribution of sample statistics SE. We'll just need to divide by that SE, which we'll have to approximate with this amount. This is the three distribution diagram for uh, a numerical variable.